the child moves from the PICU unit to the ward, um, this is the next stage of their recovery process. It means that they are medically stable um, to go into a, an environment where they're not monitored as much and their nursing care is reduced, um, but they still have significant medical issues uh, ongoing. Sabella spent three weeks in ICU and um, <clears throat> it's almost a little bit daunting when you've had so much one-on-one -one -on -one care. Going back to that ward setting can be really daunting as well when you don't just have your own nurse there with you all the time. You go from this, I guess, safety blanket of someone always watching Mia to then moving to ward where there's, you know, they come in, like Mia was had her obs done, I think, every hour, like she's still very, very unwell. There were 20 different departments that would come in and it's a revolving door. <laughs> like people just come in and you know, like it, there's no privacy in hospital. It's a really hard shift if you've never experienced hospital before. That was challenging, yeah. <laughs> you've gone from a very different environment in the ICU and uh, all of your mindset is around um, survival and, and um, some dire things and you get to the ward and, and, um, and families do need to uh, be aware of that transition and how that can feel for them um, from a perspective of uh, what's important um, and for families I, I tend to think of it like needing to change gears uh, and so you know not many people drive manual cars these days but I think it is a good example where you have to put the clutch in and then take a bit of time to change gears and slowly release the clutch so that you can understand that you are in a different phase now. The nurses aren't with you all the time so you are you know you having to watch your child if I felt the pressure then to then you know, take on a nursing role and watch Mia and, and really strongly advocate for her and ring the bell to get a nurse in if I, if I thought something was wrong. So I think a bit of, you then go into taking a bit of pressure to be a very strong advocate for your child in ward, yeah, um, which is challenging. I think it's just part of the journey. So it's normal for parents to feel lost when, they're, uh, when they first come because they don't know what the next steps are and it's hard to get answers. Um, and so, um, you know, how long am I going to be here? What will happen for my child? Um, some of those questions we can't answer right at the beginning uh, and the answers we can give is as we get to know your child and where they're at, we'll be working on, on like weekly goals or priorities that you have uh, so that we can work together on what those next steps are. The overarching goal of rehab is to regain as much function as possible following the sepsis and also to reintegrate that child back into their home, school and family life. And that might take weeks to months. It's, it's very different from each child depending on the severity of the, the illness and how it's affected their body, which it often does in multiple ways. There's such baby steps in rehab um, and you just don't realise the impact that it has and, until you're there, you know, that um, it's probably taken about two years, I think, for Sabella to get, well, you know, it did take about two years to get to back to where we, you know, that emotionally that she was great and um, that she had, you know, decent strength in her hand again and she's adapted to how she does things too. So for a family with a child with sepsis and when they come into rehab, they'll be surrounded by uh, a substantial team. So you've got your doctors and your nurses, um, so your rehab specialists and the like, uh, and the rehab nurses that are on the ward. And on top of that, there's a multidisciplinary team that um, will be part of um, uh, that team, and that can include physios, OTs, social workers, music therapists, speech pathologists, dietitians. We've got uh, allied health assistants that help us within the therapy um, sessions that we run. The thing is that we work together um, and that team uh, works to support each other and support the child and family get through what's a really challenging time in life. Rehab's slow, yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. It is a journey. Um, 
and like Mia's three years on now from being when she got ill and she's doing amazingly well in her legs but it's it's really taken a good two and a half years I'd say for her to get going in legs like what she is now and have that confidence and that that leg you know the muscle strength to do it and the balance um, it, you know it does take a while for it to all to come together. So early in that transition to rehab uh, one of the things we want to do is get to know the child and family and there's different ways we do that and so rapport building is really important. We want to know what, um, what are the likes, uh, what the child likes and, and what they don't like and, and they tend to realise the things I don't like because I tell them like jelly, I don't like jelly uh, and they all seem to remember that but we want to know what the child, um, what their interests are, how the uh, what are the interests of the family as a whole, their siblings. It's a real time where we're getting to know the child and family. At the start of the year, I made like this netball team that I wanted to make for like a couple of years. And so I said like the whole time, can I go back to play netball? And so that was my goal, to be able to play netball and touch again. Whether it be in a you know, rehab hospital environment or outside in the community, it, for me, uh, it just has to be play-based and, and the rehab it is part of that. It's not like an adult can go in, okay, my rehab's to lift these weights. For kids, that's never gonna work. You have rehab in a, you know, you have physio sessions in a park, so yeah. The family is the child's expert. And so they know the, the most about the child. They know what motivates the child. They know what, um, what the child will be likely wanting to do when they, when they get home from hospital. So um, we use that information to set goals on a weekly basis. I remember like when she first got legs and I just thought there's no way. It's like having a toddler again and you're just there. You know there's no way she's going to be able to independently walk upstairs or walk downstairs. You know I'll just always be worried that I've got to catch catch her because she's going to fall um, yeah and then her, her strength built and and you go oh my god I can't believe Pete and I are sitting down watching all three kids play in a park where she is now to what I thought was possible eh, three years ago is I, I would not have believed it. Rehabilitation can go for days and days and seem never-ending at times some days will be better than others. The important thing is to keep on going and to have breaks when you need it. Um, that goes for the child, but also for the family and the carers. There are gonna be days where you feel like you're on top of the world, and there are days that you're going to feel down in the dumps, and that's okay that's natural, um, it's important to acknowledge those feelings and to talk about those feelings um, with people that you trust.